dollars. Well, Mitt Romney says today's jobs report demonstrates the failure of the president's economic policies as unemployment has moved up to 8.3 percent. The president says we have more work to do, but things are getting better. There are three more jobs reports before the election, including on the Friday right before Election Day. Will those numbers vindicate the White House or bolster Mitt Romney's chances? Joining me now, Keith Boykin, former Clinton White House aide, and Dan Mitchell, a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Dan, does today's jobs report create any co confidence that President Obama's policies can foster needed job growth? Way back uh, last year, I made my own personal prediction that if the unemployment rate wasn't under 8%, then Obama was in real trouble, and I'm going to hold to that. I think that's a, a benchmark that uh, voters are going to look at and uh, use to grade the president's proposals. And don't forget, way back when the so-called stimulus was enacted, the president promised that by today, the unemployment rate would be down around 5.5%. So by the administration's own numbers, they deserve an F. Wow, 5.5%. Keith, where did they get that number? First of all, the president never made such a promise. That's a complete false statement that he just made. You're making, you're making an accusation based on a statement from an advisor before the president even took office and realized the economic situation we were in. Look, the reality is when President Obama came into office, we were losing 700,000 jobs a month. Since that time, he signed an Economic Recovery Act, which has turned the, turned the situation around. We had 4.5 million new jobs created, 29 consecutive months of private sector job growth, had 160 163,000 new jobs created just last month. Yes, the unemployment rate went up. It went up from 8.217% to 8.254%. That's a tiny, insignificant change, but the reality is we need to do a lot more, but the president is, is, is doing the best he can with all the obstacles he's facing. Well, but, but Keith, Keith you know, it's a hard argument to, meet, to make, though, that things are actually going well, right? I mean, we're way below where we should be in a, in a recovery, even with all those great stats that you just, that you just put forward, right? I mean, you're not saying that things are... Are, are, are going no. well, right? I, I'm saying that things are things are moving in a direction that's much better than they were to, in 2009. And in order for things to continue to get get, get better, we're going to have to need more government support. We're going to need more government infrastructure investment, more government in education investment. It's exactly the opposite of what Mitt Romney is proposing. The unemployment rate for people who have college degrees is 13.9 percent. For people who, I mean, excuse me, is 3 percent. For people who don't have college degrees, is 13.9 percent. Do you see why we need to emphasize education? Let me jump in here because yeah. it's, it's rather a remarkable bit of spinning by Keith to say that the president isn't responsible for the numbers generated by the chairman of his own Council of Economic Advisors, the numbers that the president was touting when he was pushing the stimulus. But let's set that aside and focus on what is the big issue. Do we really think America will have more prosperity if we make our fiscal policy more like Europe with higher tax rates and more government spending? We should be trying to be Hong Kong and Singapore. We should have lower tax rates, not higher tax rate. It stunned me that the day that we got these bad numbers, or let's say mediocre, I want to be as fair as I can, but the right. day we got these mediocre numbers, the president goes out and doubles down on the class warfare tax policy. Let's tax the job creators. Boy, that'll get us more jobs. I, I, yeah. work for, I work for President Clinton. The top tax rate under, Clinton, under the Clinton administration was 39.6 percent. That's higher than it is today. Yeah, tax, but that was a different ta time, Keith. No, you, were no, 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 well, you were in the dot-com well, well, boom. You were in the dot-com boom. Yeah, yeah, we but, had but, a but, balanced but, budget. Yes, but Maria, let me also say this. The, the top tax rate for six of the eight years of the Reagan administration was 50 percent. We're talking about a 35 percent top marginal tax rate. Corporate tax rates are lower than they were today. We have a lower marginal tax rate today than, than, than they were. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Reagan administration. So the idea that somehow you can't create jobs or you can't grow the economy when you have slightly higher taxes doesn't make any sense because we did it when taxes were much higher than they yeah, are right it now. Then how come it hasn't happened the last couple of years then? Well, because we had the worst economic recession since the Great Depression. We also have had a cutback in government jobs. Look, we've cut 485,000 jobs since January of 2000, government jobs since January of 2010. If we hadn't cut those jobs, that's 485,000 more people would be contributing to the economy. That's having a drag on the uh, drag on the economic output. It's having a drag on the unemployment rate. And if you look at what Europe is doing... So you think we should have bigger government than Keith? 
I think the government needs to be invested in education infrastructure. We need to spend more. But, but, when the but, but that when is the all bigger government. No, when go the ahead, Dan. When go ahead, Dan. The, Keith, Jump Keith, in here. I, Keith, I want to make a deal with you. Uh, I agree with you. We had good growth during the Clinton years, and tax rates were a little bit higher. But here's what Bill Clinton did. He reduced the burden of federal spending from 22% of GDP to 18% of GDP. I'll go back. I'll go back to Bill Clinton's tax rates if you're willing to get rid of all the Obama spending, all the Bush but the, spending, but all this the Obama regulation, and all the Bush regulation. Yes, there's more to life than just taxes. It's the overall burden of government. And the problem is, under both Bush and Obama, we've been becoming more like Europe. And I don't want to be France. I don't want to be Greece. I want to be Hong Kong or well, Singapore. Well, you, well I want to be well, America. You, Gentlemen, you, thank you so much. Okay. We appreciate it. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll continue talking about this important topic. We'll see you soon. Dan, Keith, thanks so much.